The churchyard is an idyllic place to be on a perfect summer's evening. It's been my quest after death to discover why a woman should have been forgotten. I'm here to start an excavation, which I'm hoping will end up with being recognised once again as one of the key figures in post-war British culture. La, 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 la. The people in their cars, they're the privileged few in our society. La, 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 la. They enjoy the welfare state, and they don't have angst. And it's not for them to worry about la, la, the quality la, 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 la. of the motorway. To the south and the east are the lowlands, young, soft, extroverted, and always very easily accessible. Then in the north and the west are the highlands, which are built of the ancient hard rock, very hard, introverted, and relatively inaccessible. Not very many people live among the higher mountains. Look and see where they are prepared to shift most stone and soil. That is where a people's heart really lies. It's been my quest after death to discover why a woman should have been forgotten. I'll never forget you. To the south and the east there are the lowlands. Young, soft, extroverted, and always very easily accessible. Then in the north and the west there are the highlands which are built of the ancient hard rocks. Very hard, introverted, and relatively inaccessible. Not very many people live among the higher mountains. Look and see where they are prepared to shift most stone and soil. That is where people's heart really lies. The inability of mortals to imagine things as they truly are is what allows them to live. Since one momentary, unresisted glimpse of the world's totality of suffering would annihilate them on the spot. The fences are inconsistent, the lampposts are ugly, there are too many signs. The bypassed and the bypassers are unprotected. The generation younger than ours are extremely depressed. It's as if we were a country of ostriches. But our attitude to motorways, ringways, is at last a chance of a great reversal. The Celts made their round houses rather as a bird builds its nest. They made their tracks and their field walls curving in and out with the hill and the valley. The Romans imposed an intellectual pattern on what had been the spontaneous, unthought out pattern of prehistoric and Celtic life. They drove their roads as straight as thought. The houses were square and they stood out against this rolling, curving substance of the prehistoric world. It's been my quest after death to discover why a woman should have been forgotten. Brusillon to Languedoc, Marseille to the Spanish border, all along the coast. Pleasure to you. Go and get an ice cream and you just don't have to worry about it. Venice sinks in the mud. We could have a, a new Venice. We should leave people where they are to smash it up in complete abandon and happiness. They're the privileged few in our society. They enjoy the welfare state, heavy taxes to give them quality. The fences are inconsistent, the lampposts are ugly, there are too many signs. Oh. 
Kabuta lazy might have got a couple thousand. Like a can boom, blev, voodoo, come in a jam. Crystal kick for Derek Walcott, T.S. Eliot. Like a precious memory with ungla vague fleeting into authenticity. We make you weep, we make you feel it come. The bypass passed, and the bypasses and the bypass of the motorway are unprotected. Last chance of a great reverse. Considering so much society at the moment may be really stupid. We may have to rethink the whole thing. It may be that we should leave people where they are to smash it up in complete abandon and happiness so that nobody has to worry about it anymore. Chance great reverse. Kabuta lazy might have got a couple thousand. When you love a leave, like a can dumble voodoo come in a chant. And do what the feet you can see, still you beg and you plead till you win a reprieve and you're ready for rock steady. But Mandela for him thousands and thousands and thousands. Our general objective is to knit together things that are old and tired. Right from the start, we begin to put down mental roots. Hooking on to Rose Bay Willow Herb, the children overturning wrecked cars, the smell of curry on the stairs of rejected tenements, oddments of past character, or obvious large identifying fixes of the big power stations. We used to talk of objects, but is anything and Everything can be raised by association to become the poetry of the ordinary. And in this way, an industrial site is very easy to identify with reality. A site on an industrial blight can very easily be used to renew flux and change, to re-identify forthright and honest flux and change. We see the ships as decoration. The ships on the Thames approach the Isle of Dogs, turn at right angles and go past. The river is the biggest fix of all, a big geographical fix. The East India Dock, three and a half years ago, you could still walk up to the fifth floor of the tenements. You could look over the upcoming roar of the tunnel traffic for the urban scene. You could look into the East India Dock. Calm sheet of water, a few ships. A handful of China shards on the site. Maybe ballast from the East Indiamen. Maybe cargo fallout used locally. You're in a situation of flux and change. The life has gone from the dream. And the ships on the Thames are passing either down to Tilbury or to Antwerp and, and, and Delta Port. Realize you have to be strong enough to carry the full responsibility for renewal of your dream. The brief building of this mutated dream by all the people concerned means society at the moment asks architects to build these new users. But we should only be asked to, to smash it up so that nobody has to worry about it anymore. You know, we may be asking people to live in a way that, that is stupid. We get no body of choice, how to live, where to live. This was the situation we stepped into. Anything will do, make do, 
no possible standard because there was nothing decent. Kabuta lazy might have got a couple thousand. Kamau Brathwaite, Martin Carter, Jane Carter, or Mary Baraka. Like a can dumble voodoo come in a chant. A old time calypso or a slave song that get banned. But from Granny right down to Grand Pickney, each and every one can recite the one. With my own sense of time, Goon Poet have to step in line. Kabuta lazy might have got a couple thousand. But Mandela fee him thousands and thousands. The beauty of sorrow is superior to the beauty of life. It is the beauty of Bruges, great glory that has gone. One last fixed smile. Everything around us has withdrawn within itself. The waters are still, the houses closed, the bells whisper in the mist. That is the secret of its charm. Why want it to become like all the rest? It is unique. Walking through Bruges is like walking through memories. It is our duty to speak about it in order to safeguard the next mechanisms who, after all, are an extension of ourselves. They're not some nebulous character. Even the blossoming tree lies the moment its bloom is seen without the shadow of terror. We're talking about pleasure, structured fashion, mechanisms. We could allow ourselves such pleasures. There is no longer beauty or consolation, except in the gaze falling on horror. We didn't be so puritanical. Withstanding it, and in an alleviated consciousness of negativity, holding fast to the possibility of what is better. The people in their cars, they're the privileged few in our society. They enjoy the welfare state. And they don't have angst. And it's not for them to worry about the quality of the motorway. For the intellectual, inviolable isolation is now the only way of showing some measure of solidarity. The fences are inconsistent. The lampposts are ugly. There are too many signs. The bypassed and the bypassers are unprotected. All collaboration, all the human worth of social mixing and participation merely masks a tacit acceptance of inhumanity. The generation younger than ours are extremely depressed. It's as if we were a country of ostriches. It is the sufferings of men that should be shared. The smallest step towards their pleasures is one toward the hardening of their pains. But our attitude to motorways, ringways, is at last a chance of a great reversal. It was after that I began to drink. The beauty of sorrow is superior to the beauty of life. I drank because I couldn't think of anything else to do. It is the beauty of Bruges, great glory that has gone. And it sort of worked. We stepped into our love nest. One last fixed smile. Everything around us has withdrawn within itself. I pulled him towards me and we briefly kissed. The waters are still, the houses closed, the bells whisper in the mist. I felt him push me away. And he began to cry. It was not the reaction that I had been hoping for. That is the secret of its charm. And then it all spilled out. He was sorry. Why well, wanted to become like all the rest? You see, the thing about friends is that they link you to the past. It is unique. Walking through Bruges is like walking through memories. But someone, that mysterious someone, nice, with a sense of humour, links you to an unknown future. A future with friends is a future looking backwards, full of reunions and remembrances. It's a life spent swimming in sepia. 
these keys of Bruges. How in my pensive youth I followed, confessed, loved them. The journey back home was three hours of uncomfortable silence. As I got out of the car, I tried to smile and said, well, at least you didn't waste the hotel voucher. I'm so sorry, he said dolefully and drove away. With secret places I alone knew about and consoled, houses whose dead windows watched me. I felt like crying, but I wouldn't let myself. It wasn't that tragic, just silly. And in the prison of those keys of stone, the stagnant water of the canals, when no more ships or small craft pass, where nothing is reflected other than the stillness of the gables. But I couldn't face going home. Not to more phone messages. I just wandered and, on a whim, I took a bus to the zoo. I wanted to see the penguins. I've never been attracted more intensively by anything than by human beings. And at the same time, never more thoroughly repelled by anything than by human beings. I loathe people. But they are simultaneously the sole purpose of my life. He avoids the sun. There's nothing he shuns more than the sun. I hate the sun. You know that I hate the sun more than anything in the world. What he likes best are foggy days. On foggy days, he leaves the house very early in the morning, actually takes a walk, which he does not normally do, but basically he hates walking. I hate walking, he says. It seems so pointless to me. I walk, and while I'm walking, I keep thinking how I hate walking. I have no other thoughts at the time. I cannot understand that there are people who are able to think while walking. To think of something other than that walking is pointless and useless. I prefer to walk up and down in my room. It is then that I have my best ideas. I can stand by the window for hours, looking down into the street. I look down into the street and observe the people. Who are these people? The bypassed and the bypassers. I've never been attracted more intensively by anything than by human beings. People in their cars. They're the privileged few in our society. And at the same time, never more thoroughly repelled by anything than by human beings. They enjoy the welfare state and they don't have angst and it's not for them to worry about the quality of the motorway whose crow steps traced on the waters seem like stairways of crepe leading to the very bottom my father would bring me there and tell me about the emperor penguin and how it would stand nursing its egg for three months during the antarctic winter the fences are inconsistent the lampposts are ugly. There are too many signs. And as if to wash the corpse of the lifeless waters, there is the eternal weeping, the streaming and dripping of gutters, the drains and sporadic springs, the overflow from the roofs, the seepage from the tunnels of the bridges, like a great euphony of sobbing and inconsolable tears. Roussillon to Languedoc. Marseille to the Spanish border, all along the coast. Pleasure to you. Go and get an ice cream and you just don't have to worry about it. On the left, the northern approach to the Blackwall Tunnel. It's very depressing. At the bottom, the East India Dock Road. Broken lifts, smashed up glass in entrance halls, and on the right, Cotton Street, the main feeder road to the Isle of Dogs. Venice sinks in the mud. We could have a, a new Venice. 
we should leave people where they are to smash it up in complete abandon and happiness. Then there is a smooth, rounded corner by a portico. If we are not to be torn apart by our differing individual natures as makers and destroyers, society has to, 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 to make a framework so that the, 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 the makers can get ahead of the destroyers. They're the privileged few in our society. They enjoy the welfare state, heavy taxes to give them quality. The fences are inconsistent, the lampposts are ugly, there are too many signs. We are longing for the day in which the motorway pattern and the mass transit system lines can settle down so that we can get on with the job of rebuilding a quiet, depressing living environment. The bypassed and the bypassers of the motorway are unprotected. At last, a chance of a great reversal. We regard it as a demonstration of a more enjoyable way of living. It is a model, an exemplar. It's very depressing. When it's finished, you'll be able to smell, feel, and experience. It's too good, too good for the people that were going to live in it. And it's going to be smashed up. Society at the moment may be really stupid. We may have to rethink the whole thing. It may be that we should leave people where they are to smash it up in complete abandon and happiness so that nobody has to worry about it anymore. The ground is modeled upwards to discourage people from playing football. The mound doesn't look very large on the model, but it is in fact a scatter of events. Our general objective is to knit together things that are old and tired. Right from the start, we begin to put down mental roots, hooking on to a rose bay willow herb, the children overturning wrecked cars, the smell of curry on the stairs of rejected tenements, oddments of past character, or obvious large identifying fixes, of the big power stations. We're waiting for the bus here. Some of us have walked on the ground toward the school building into holes in the ground. We're holding a class here beneath the school. The two existing spheres on either side of the stairway are subsumed into a field of spheres from small to large. The spheres are cut into. We're walking through them, we're sitting inside them. Light shines from inside. We sit within the glow of the spheres. We used to talk of objects. That is, anything and everything can be raised by association to become the poetry of the ordinary. Its form will respond, we hope, to the way people want to live now with their equipment, their domestic appliances, and their cars. The plaza fills up with itself, with elements that were there all the time. The elements have replicated. The plaza turns in on itself. In a way, it will be, to outsiders, something that they can immediately see as a new form, and to the people who live in it, it offers a, a, a place which will release them and change them. And, and in this way, an industrial site is very easy to identify with reality. A site on an industrial blight can very easily be used to renew flux and change, to re-identify forthright and honest flux and change. This office tower doubles now as a water tower. From different heights, waterfalls flow down the front facade as if over a mountainside. 
come with me into the building. We're walking inside a transparent tube through the waterfalls. The water that fills the courtyard slips through the side windows into the building. Inside the lobby, we sit on wedges of water. We sit in niches behind the water. The building is the home of an insurance company that's still standing in the middle of the flood. We see the ships as decoration. The ships on the Thames approach the Isle of Dogs, turn at right angles and go past. At the turn of the century, architects dreamed of garden cities in every town and village in England. The children dreamed of simple, clean, sun-giving architecture. The river is the biggest fix of all, a big geographical fix. The East India Dock, three and a half years ago, you could still walk up to the fifth floor of the tenements. You could look over the upcoming roar of the tunnel traffic to the urban scene, the dream. The entrance to this new city is not a building, not an arch, but a bulge, a fold, a warp. The gateway isn't a structure. Instead, it destructures and restructures what's already here. The edge of the city doesn't rest horizontally, lying on the ground. The edge of the city rises up to assert itself. It curls up to become a flag. As we come into the city, the city rises up to meet us. The city wraps itself around us. The city starts from the ground up. It gets its ground up. The ground of the city becomes the sky. Calm sheet of water, a few ships. A handful of china shards on the site Maybe ballast from the East Indiamen, maybe cargo fallout used locally. You're in a situation of flux and change. What we have now is people living in these uh, uh, clean, sun-drenched boxes with fitted carpets inside. It's too good too good for the people that were going to live in it. The concrete wall starts at the spiral of grass outside the building and winds from outside to inside. But the concrete wall isn't alone. Something is stuck to it. At the spiral of grass, the soil starts to rise up. A glass retaining wall holds the dirt in and allows the dirt to accumulate. When the dirt wall reaches the concrete wall, it clings onto it and uses it as support. The dirt wall starts to take. It fits onto the concrete wall like a new skin. As it moves over the wall, it moves upward. It rises up the wall. The ground fights back. The ground is brought up onto what's built on the ground. At the moment, there is a terrific lack of fit between those things which people own, the way people treat things they own, and the, the way they think about and treat what is in the public area of ownership. This is reflected terribly obviously in the, when you go into any dwelling, any house in any part of the country, the inside is almost always well kept, well furnished, clean. The outside, particularly in state housing, well kept, well furnished, clean, all the things we all know, know about. You can live in a city that's stored in a truck. Drive where you want. When the truck is parked, one unit after another is pulled out of the trailer. Each unit slides on tracks attached to the walls of the next largest unit. Each unit is slid out far enough so that its support legs can be folded down and fixed to the ground. The truck is driven forward so that the unit is released. Outside each unit, a section of the wall folds down to make a gangplank, and a ladder beneath it is hinged down onto the ground. 
step up into your house now. The architect is in a, in a strange situation, but he can recognize that the uh, people's aspirations about how they, mm, how they wish to behave, uh, that's a funny way of putting it, are, are changing. That is, in spite of the um, vandalism, that people are learning to expect uh, a, more co a, a, a style of life which has more quality and, in a sense, more control. And this is most clearly seen in the leisure pattern. Like a turtle, you carry your home on your back. Your house is folded up into a backpack that fits onto your supplementary backbone. Pivot out your backpack and slide it down your backbone pipes. Your backpack telescopes and stretch it out behind you. You've set down the foundations of your house. Your backpack opens like a fan. From your extended spine, a macro shell flares out over your body. You are your own house. Your house is your second skin. As you light your house from within, your skin glows. The life has gone from a dream. And the ships on the Thames are passing either down to Tilbury or to Antwerp and, and, and Delta Port. Realize you have to be strong enough to carry the full responsibility for renewal of your dream. The brief building of this mutated dream by all the people concerned mean society at the moment asks architects to build these new users but we should only be asked to to smash it up so that nobody has to worry about it anymore let's cross the bridge it's mid-tide the bridge is level with the water we walk across the cut past the tree in the middle of the bridge the time passes Let's cross the bridge again. It's low tide now. The tide lowers a float, which slides a column under the bridge down over a cylinder fixed to the ground underwater. We step down into the cut, into an enclave separate from the city, and sit facing the tree below us. Time passes. Let's cross the bridge again. Now it's high tide. The tide raises the float sliding the column up the cylinder on the water. We step up toward the tree and sit down, our backs to the tree, facing the city. The churchyard is an idyllic place to be on a perfect summer's evening. It's been my quest after death to discover why a woman should have been forgotten. I'm here to start excavation, which I'm hoping will end up with being recognised once again as one of the key figures in post-war British culture. Inside this war memorial, the land comes up in waves. The waves carry with them, under them, the names of the war dead. It's as if the names of the dead were submerged under the land. Now that the land waves up, the names are freed. The names are revealed underneath the waves. The names of the dead roll over us as we walk. The architecture in this plaza sends out feelers, scouts. The columns are freed from the building and come out to meet the street and the people. Each column proliferates and extends into a line of columns. The columns shake. The columns split and shift and bend in different directions. Where a column splits, light spills out from inside and washes over the plaza and shoots out into the sky. Let's join the columns now. 
as they march across the plaza, as they dance. You know, we may be asking people to live in a way that, that is stupid. We get no body of choice how to live, where to live. This was the situation we stepped into. Anything will do, make do. No possible standards because there was nothing decent for um, changing the responsibility for combat. It is our duty to speak about it in order to safeguard the next mechanisms who after all are an extension of ourselves. They're not some nebulous character. We're talking about pleasure, structured fashion mechanisms. The two gardens from the past are each enclosed by an eight foot high chain link fence. We can't go inside. These are gardens for the eyes only. The new garden in the middle is a garden for the body. A plane of chain link is stretched between the two fences. It's a horizontal plane of ivy, four feet off the ground. We walk in a group down an eight-foot-wide pathway through the middle. Now turn onto a four-foot pathway. Only two of us at a time can fit here. The garden is chest-high around us. Turn again. You walk alone here down a two-foot pathway that dead ends in seating. You sink into the garden. We could allow ourselves such pleasures. We didn't be so puritanical. The people in their cars, they're the privileged few in our society. They enjoy the welfare state. They don't have hangs. And it's not for them to worry about the quality of the motorway. The fences are inconsistent. The lampposts are ugly. There are too many signs. The bypassed and the bypassers are unprotected. Walk with me now to the train station at the bottom of the hotel. Starting from the ground, walls rise up and curve over us like shells to become roofs. The shells are screens like Venetian blinds, horizontal slats suspended one above the other and set at different angles. Everything behind the screens, the ramps on either side of us and their retaining walls, the traffic on the ramps, the surrounding buildings in this canyon, they're all turned into flickers, flickers of images. It's as if we're in a movie, a kaleidoscope, a flip book. A generation younger than ours, extremely depressed, it's as if we were a country of ostriches. You approach the Central Exhibition Hall, as always, from the museum lobby. But this time the room is doubled. It's as if you're seeing everything twice. The front wall has slipped down from itself and bulges out through itself. Behind the doorway, another doorway slants down across it. Inside the Exhibition Hall, the room you're in has fallen down on you. You're in a replica of the original room that slipped down from a corner. The skylight of the replicated room slants down over your head. At your feet, another skylight pivots up out of the floor. Another room, another replica of the original room has started to rise inside the fallen room. motorways, ringways, is at last the chance of a 
great proverbs. I'll leave my fans transfixed, channeling this handwritten script, chanting the anthem like a Sanskrit. Transmit the stances to canvas, working better under pressure with the temper tantrum. The advantages, bookshelf sandstorm. I look into myself, what do I stand for? Nothing but cougars and panthers on the dance floor. Dismantle your mechanical samples, brah. Angelic animal, antler, pampered cannabis. With the red wand, decanter, amethyst, lured boy banter, speech enchanter. Got the proper propaganda on my scanner. Taking a gander, and I'ma supply the manda. Writing rhymes on my hands, hurt pants from the hamper. Trance when I trample and damage all you amateurs. Mannequin managers, girls never been damper. Scanner darkly, partly Donnie Darko. Examine dark heart in the party, yo. Body bardo, never saw me at the bar, bro. Nonchalant, cosmonaut, thoughtful apostle. In the scenes fast like a tree's playing my part actor it seems like in gravity attaching these pens the paper is half half hazardly asking the universal existence for the personal vision of wisdom and assistance on the mission to live the pilgrimage to the wilderness build the village and mix the villain and citizens Kabuta lazy might have got a couple thousand like a can dumble voodoo come in a chant Chris O'Kickbo, Derek Walcott, T.S. Eliot Militant idiots, filling the filly, you still like a filling my photoshop, photosynthesis, stimulate your stimulus, observational witness, the slang that I spit was ripped from the continuum. With ungla vague fleeting hint of authenticity, we make you weep, we make you feel incomplete. Kabuta lazy might have got a couple thousand. When your love I leave Erase some lies and ignorance, ignore it You can't revert to save the force Quit gorgeous Gorgeous now oranges or it can storage bins are done with horns as an ornament Morph into a mortal quick And though they feed you can see Still you beg and you plead Till you win a reprieve And you're ready for rock steady But Mandela for him thousands and thousands and thousands the advantages, bookshelf sandstorm. I look into myself, what do I stand for? Nothing but cougars and panthers on the dance floor. Dismantle your mechanical samples, brah. Angelic animal, antler, pampered cannabis. With the red wand decanter. The streets were empty again. The town was going to be solitary once more. And Oog kept repeating, dead. Dead. Like a can dumble voodoo come in a chant. A whole time calypso or a slave song that get banned. But from granny right down to grand picnic. Militant idiots, filling the filly, you still like a filling my photoshop, photosynthesis, stimulate your stimulus. Observational witness, the slang that I spit was ripped from the continuum. Like a plain girl with good brains and nice ways, with a sexy disposition and plenty compassion, with a sweet smile. Erase some lies and ignorance, ignore it You can't revert to save the force, quit gorgeous Gorgeous now oranges, or it can storage bins are done with horns as an ornament, morph into a mortal quick Scrape and go on like a ape, peddling a pure eyed parchment of ethnicity. Like a black land's purse, the valley in reverse. A babbling buffoon, a losing dog. No, sir, not at all. Kabuta lazy might have got a couple thousand. Boy, it have to step in line. But man, they'll have him thousands and thousands. Like Chikaya, your Tamsi, Nicholas Bowen, around a Buddhism, and a subtle style. Still, we now go bow and scrape and go on like a ape, peddling up pure and parchment and ethnicity. Like a black land's purse, the valley in reverse. A babbling buffoon of a losing tongue. No, sir, not at all. Kabuta lazy might have got a couple thousand. Boy, it have to step in line. But man, they'll have him thousands and thousands. Kabuta lazy might have got a couple thousand. Boy, it have to step in line. But man, they love him thousands and thousands. Boy, it have to step in line. But man, they love him thousands and thousands. Kabuta lazy might have got a couple thousand. Boy, it have to step in line. But man, they love him thousands and thousands. The 
cadences of the last bells, weary and slow, little, worn-out old bells which seemed to be shedding petals. Was it on the town? Was it on a grave? From flowers of iron? The secret of survival is the defect of imagination. The inability of mortals to imagine things as they truly are is what allows them to live. Since one momentary, unresisted glimpse of the world's totality of suffering would annihilate them on the spot. It was after that I began to drink. I drank gin and tonics, I drank white wine, I might have drunk vodka, but I can't be sure. I drank because I couldn't think of anything else to do. He avoids the sun. There's nothing he shuns more than the sun. I hate the sun. You know that I hate the sun more than anything in the world. What he likes best are foggy days. And it sort of worked. We stepped into our love nest. I pulled him towards me and we briefly kissed. I felt him push me away. And he began to cry. On foggy days, he leaves the house very early in the morning. Actually takes a walk, which he does not normally do, but basically he hates walking. I hate walking, he says. Seems so pointless to me. I cannot understand that there are people who are able to think while walking. To think of something other than that walking is pointless and useless. It was not the reaction that I had been hoping for. I prefer to walk up and down in my room. It is then that I have my best ideas. I can stand by the window for hours, looking down into the street. I look down into the street and observe the people. Who are these people? And what is moving them down there in the street? Now the courtroom is quiet, but who will confess? Is it true you betrayed us? The answer is yes. Then read me the list of the crimes that are mine. I will ask for the mercy that you love to decline. And all the ladies go moist, and the judge has no choice. A singer must die for the lie in his voice. And I thank you, I thank you for doing your duty, you keepers of truth, you guardians of beauty. Your vision is right, my vision is wrong. I'm sorry for smudging the air with my song. Father night, it is thick, my defenses are here. In the clothes of a woman I would like to forgive. In the rings of her silk, in the hinge of her thighs Where I have to go begging in beauty's disguise Ah, good night, good night, my night after night My night after night after night So afraid that I listen to you, your sunglass protectors, they do that to you. It's their ways to detain, their ways to disgrace, their knee in your balls and their fist in your face. Yes, and long live the state by whoever it's made, sir, I didn't see nothing. Little, young, soft, extroverted, and 
It's been my quest after death to discover why a woman should have been forgotten. It's been my quest after death to discover why a woman should have been forgotten. Young, soft, extroverted, and always very easily accessible. Then, in the north and west, there the highlands which were built in the ancient hard rocks. Very hard, infrastructure, and relatively inaccessible. Not very many people live among the higher mountains. Look and see where they have prepared to shift those stones and soil. The inability of mortals to imagine things as they truly are is what allows them to live. Since one momentary unresisted glimpse of the world's totality of suffering would annihilate the world's spot. The fences are inconsistent, the lampposts are ugly, too many signs. The bypassed and the bypassers are unprotected. It's as if we were a country of ostriches. Bruce 
Roussillon to Languedoc, Marseille to the Spanish border, all along the coast. Pleasure to you. Venice sinks in the mud. We could have a, a new Venice. We should leave people where they are to smash it up in complete abandon and happiness. Its form will respond, we hope. They're the privileged few The way few people in our want society. to live now with their equipment, their domestic they appliances, and their cars. Enjoy the welfare state, heavy taxes. To in a way, quality. it will be to outsiders something that they can immediately see in a new form. The and to, to the people who live in it, it offers a place which will release them and change them and be At the turn of the century, architects dream of garden in every town, village in England. The children dream of simple, clean, sun-giving architecture. What we have now is people living in these uh, the bypassed clean and the bypassers sun drenched boxes with text. fitted carpets inside. Even the blossoming tree lies the moment its bloom is seen without the shadow of terror. There is no longer beauty or consolation, except in the gaze falling on horror, withstanding it, and in unalleviated consciousness of negativity, holding fast to the possibility of what is better. For the intellectual, Inviable isolation is now the only way of showing some measure of solidarity. All collaboration, all the human work of social mixing and participation merely masks a tacit acceptance of inhumanity. It is the sufferings of men that should be shared. The smallest step towards their pleasures is one toward the hardening of their pains. Now the courtroom is quiet, but who will confess? Is it true you betrayed us? The answer is yes. Then read me the list 
of the crimes that are mine. I will ask for the mercy 